Hey guys, welcome to Isaiah's Reviews, and today I'll be unboxing and reviewing the Weber Master Touch Charcoal Grill. It's along the same lines of all the Weber kettle grills that you know uh, from decades back. But well, I'm going to uh, kind of unbox this thing so we can look inside and see uh, if there's any risk of damage in shipment because I know uh, these things aren't cheap. And also, it would be nice to know that if you can feel comfortable with ordering it online instead of going to the store and picking it up. So as you can see, they've been able to maintain a small form factor for shipping. I mean, this is a very tiny box, and I'm assuming there's some styrofoam involved. So let's just open it up and see. Huh, so we're uh, greeted with a piece of cardboard here. And once we look inside, we see that there's cardboard corners in here where the uh, grill just sort of inserts down into it. And also there's some uh, uh, the charcoal uh, uh, containers are inside in this cardboard, but the way it sits in the cardboard, it shouldn't scratch the inside of the grill at all. And that's evident by looking around. There's no scratches or issues on it. There's also a manual in here as well, right inside this uh, dome here. But we probably will need this little easy to do assembly guide and I've heard that these are pretty well uh, easy to put together so that's exciting and here we also have uh, a little brochure to advertise the stuff that they have for it which I'll get into a little bit later and here's the two charcoal containers uh, not much to them a little air get in there to them and uh, so you can use some uh, indirect heating which is pretty cool now this is the top uh, so be careful that you don't cut yourself. Uh, this is a thin enough of a gauge steel that uh, if you run it along here too quick, I think you might nick yourself. But here's the uh, nice little uh, temperature controller. You can dial this uh, down in temp by closing it and then you can open it all the way up to increase the temperature. And here you can see how deep uh, this thing actually goes. And you can see the uh, ash collector sits down in there. And inside the ash collector are the, uh, looks like some of the pieces that go to the wheels, um, the handles for everything. And yeah, I think that's the, about it. All your uh, small items like your thermometer and stuff like that, I believe are in here as well. Yeah, there it is. So now we'll pull out the bottom piece, which has a little heft to it. Oh, you hear that? So very well made uh, Weber grills. I'll tell you in a minute why I decided to go with a Weber charcoal uh, over all the rest. Now here is your uh, warming grate uh, right here. So this will set on top of there if you're kind of uh, just wanting to warm something up or keep something warm, this is what you'll use that for. It's another benefit of going with a Master Touch over your standard kettle. You'll get this thing, which I think you can buy these anyway on their own, but it's included in this anyway. And you can see inside the box how they put the uh, legs, they wrap it around the sides of the box. And then you have your remaining grates uh, sitting in the very bottom. And here are the wheels, and apparently those were the hubcaps that was inside the uh, uh, ash collector. And this little triangle thing is the uh, kind of, I guess, brace thing that keeps the legs together and apart uh, toward the bottom. And here are the cooking grates for the Master Touch. They're a little bit thicker in diameter than some of the competition. Uh, that's another reason why I went with them because they'll last like forever and not, uh, you know, uh, bend and all that other junk like some of the cheaper ones will. This is pretty heavy, very hefty, so that's a cool touch. And another thing with a master touch, this centerpiece comes out if you want to or you can leave it in here in these grooves and it locks itself in there pretty good. So don't worry about that being a pain in the butt. I think it'll stay in there pretty well. But these centerpieces will come out and it'll allow you to put in different cooking uh, surfaces. Like you can get a cast iron uh, insert to put in here for searing, or you can get a little bowl to put in for cooking on, or even there's a, a pizza stone that fits down in there, but you could probably just use your uh, own pizza stone from the oven or something like that for it, maybe, I don't know. But those are options regardless. I like the uh, 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 cast iron insert uh, for searing on steaks and things and burgers and such, so that'll probably be an investment that I make. They're only like 30 bucks a piece. And another really cool thing on the Master Touch is these corners will lift up and just like those little charcoal uh, containers go in the bottom underneath this, these are the same exact size as the tops of the containers. So if you need to add more charcoal, you just lift this up on the ends instead of taking off the whole thing with your meat and all that other stuff on it, especially if you want to smoke something for a period of time, uh, this comes in good on adding uh, additional charcoal on it if you want a long cook. 
And here is the grate that goes down in the very bottom, uh, right up above where the ash would fall through at uh, here. So, and it's kind of greasy and dirty, so you might want to leave that in the box until you actually need it. And this little guy here is actually the lid holder that will go onto the uh, side of the grill itself. And then there'll be some pieces that go here. When you set the lid down, it just rolls back and sits in its place. And you roll it back down to close it. Uh, that's a big, huge plus. And then here's your three uh, legs. This is like uh, some of the thinnest stuff I've ever seen in my life. Very lightweight, almost feel like plastic. So just know that this is probably the cheapest thing that's even on your grill are the legs themselves. So uh, be mindful of that. And that's it. So I'll uh, assemble this thing and then we'll take a little tour around it and I'll show you if I had any issues with uh, uh, installing anything on it. Uh, and yeah, that's kind of it for the unboxing. All right, so assembly of the Weber Master Touch is complete. Uh, basically the flimsiest thing on this unit as a whole is the uh, legs themselves. They're pretty thin, so it kind of makes this top just a hair bit wobbly. And also the nuts that you have to attach are for this uh, lid holder. Uh, and there's the actual tool that's in this handle that has this heat shield on it. There's actually a little tool in there that will work on those nuts uh, as well. So I found that out after the fact, after I'd already gotten the tool out. Because you put this on like last, so make sure to look in here, get the little tool out, and that'll also tighten up everything else as well. The only tool you'll need is a Phillips head, and that's for this handle right here because they meet together and that screw, there's a screw in here that uh, binds these two handles around this, this uh, kind of piece here. So why would you want to buy the Master Touch over the other kettle brands? Well, for me, I really liked the lid holder. Now the lid holder works, you just pretty much take it, slightly raise it just a touch, and then roll it back. And uh, these little uh, plastic round pieces here is what this will uh, hinge on. Uh, you can take it off if you want, but you don't really have to pick, pick the thing up. You can just kind of go uh, like that and it rolls back. I also like that it comes with the charcoal holders in the bottom so I can use indirect heating to cook with. That's a big deal if you're cooking with uh, steaks even because a lot of times you want to use direct for a few minutes on each side to sear, pull them off, cook them indirectly. Uh, that also works with a ton of other things. Uh, if you want to create a heat shield, you can put these two trays on either side of the grill and just run a piece of aluminum foil in front of each piece. Put your uh, whole chicken in the middle or something. And you can cook it completely indirectly and throw some big chunks of wood in there with the charcoal and you can actually smoke it as well. So those are alternative ways to cook. And I felt, felt like that this gives me all the uh, range of cooking that I would want with a charcoal grill. It also comes with the uh, Weber temperature gauge up on the top, a heat shield at the uh, handle to, to pull the lid off. There's also a plastic piece here on this handle of this little hatch here that you'll move to adjust the temperature with. Uh, that's different than the uh, lesser models. The wheels themselves are a little bit better made than the other models. And it also has an ash bin in the bottom with a cool little lever that you can move from side to side that will allow the ash to fall down in this container, which comes off super easy and you can just dump it out so it makes for an easy cleanup as well. And plus you do get this warming grate up top and the fact that these raise up on the side so you can add charcoal in. All this stuff you can buy separate uh, to add to your existing kettle if you want, but if you're gonna get one for the first time, why not get it all already on it? Maybe it's a discount doing it that way. I didn't really research the prices uh, to justify that or not, but it all's included and you get a 10 year warranty. And speaking of their warranties, I've had to deal with them in the past because I do have a Weber Genesis natural gas grill Outside, one of the cast iron grates was just a slightly wobbly on top because there's two, two cast iron grates. So I just called them up and they were like, yeah, we'll send you one out, no problem. I said, what do you want me to do with this new one that I have? And she was like, keep it as a backup, that's fine, no big deal. Oh, and another thing to note that's different is the handle has two hooks here so you can uh, hang some of your cooking utensils off of it and stuff like that. So yeah, that's kind of it for the uh, unboxing and assembly of it. Pretty straightforward, pretty easy. Now let's do some uh, cooking on it and then I can do a full review and evaluation of the unit itself. Also, if you're in the buying mood, make sure to pick up a chimney 
It's a charcoal chimney. What you'll do is you'll fill this thing up. This is a large size, I think, but they're real cheap, like 15 bucks for this thing. Uh, you'll fill it up flush for the top with charcoal. That's the perfect amount that you'll need for this Weber Master Touch. And then you can pack this bottom full with some paper or some kind of starter. Uh, you can set it underneath to create a flame. And then you just light it. Uh, you can put some vegetable oil in with that paper as well. You can light it. Let it sit about 15 minutes. These things will be red hot and ready to dump in. You can kind of get by, I think, because of this heat shield and this without wearing some thick gloves, but you probably should just in case. But this will help you tilt and fill up those charcoal chambers there on your master touch. But yeah, highly recommend this one. All right, so you got your Weber master touch all put together. You got everything right. Of course, the legs are slightly wobbly. You'll find that out moving it around. But the thing looks really beautiful after it's put together so be sure to hold that thought in your mind because it's the last time it looks that good the rest of its life anyway uh what we're going to cook today is chicken but this advice i have for you mark uh your little uh, ash collector down there for your vent make sure that it's halfway marked and then fully marked open uh, so full half and then closed is all the way to the side that'll help you be able to uh, help out with that airflow and the temperature and stuff later and whenever you're lighting your chimney make sure to use these cheap uh, strike a fire matches i got these at Publix. i think they were like two bucks for a 10 pack or something they last like 10 minutes you'll basically light it and then you'll stick it underneath this uh, charcoal chimney uh, as you'll see here and in 15 minutes or so uh, you're good to go i mean you've got steaming hot burning uh coals which is cool i'm using hardwood uh all natural coals here so that's why this uh um sparkly show is going on here if you're using regular like kingsford charcoal or something like that you wouldn't see this amount of uh, sparkies coming off there but anyway uh here's your indirect setup uh, for cooking down the middle like what i'm going to do i put some aluminum foil in there i also got a couple of uh just chunks of wood in there for some smoky i really didn't need it my wife said it was overly smoky tasting afterwards but I've achieved 350 degrees. I've done that by uh, messing with the vents on top and bottom. And I was able to maintain that 350 the entire time. So, And then there's that cool little hold your lid feature, which I really like. But I'm going to throw these chickens on through the middle. Uh, and I've got that aluminum foil all the way down to the bottom uh, and up. And that's to uh, help create that indirect uh, heating method or cooking method that I like. It takes a little bit longer. These chickens take like uh, 30, 35 minutes or so. And uh, might I suggest uh, a Bluetooth uh, temperature probe? Uh, these are really awesome. This is the uh, iGrill Mini. Uh, I've got a separate review on that, so head over to my channel and check that out. Works great. It'll notify you when it hits 165 degrees, so you can't beat that. As long as you get your temperature right, uh, you're good to go. And then there we are toward the end of the cooking process. We're still setting at 350 degrees, which is really good. I was really impressed with the overall uh, cooking ability of this grill. The chicken tasted fantastic. It's probably some of the best chicken I've ever cooked before. It was extremely juicy, 30, 35 minutes or so, and then boom. So five out of five for this Weber grill. I thought it was fantastic, and I think it's worth the money. Uh, I have no complaints whatsoever.